matched the unusually pale skid marks investigators found on parts of the runway. The reason for the, the skid marks being so pale is because uh, that uh, cushion of steam sort of steam clean the runway, takes all the dirt and everything out of, uh, of the runway itself. Something just doesn't seem to fit. But there's still a mystery. Reverted rubber hydroplaning only occurs if the wheels lock. It's the only way to produce enough friction. The BAE 146 is equipped with anti-lock brakes. And spoilers. No spoilers, full brakes. They're not supposed to lock up and skid ever. And yet that's exactly what happened. Investigators need to know why. Investigators need a lead. They return to the sounds captured in the cockpit of Flight 670. OK, go ahead, please. We didn't know what had happened mechanically in, in the aircraft. So then we had to, to look for other means. We have landing speed. Reducing thrust. And spoilers. Hang on, play that again. Many cockpit controls make distinctive sounds when pilots move them. And spoilers. Investigators compare the cockpit recording to a detailed library of sounds, hoping to piece together what was happening on board Flight 670. There. That click is the spoiler lever. The technique pays off. They're able to identify specific sounds, including the click of the spoiler lever. No spoilers. Full brakes. Listening closely, they soon hear another sound, a sound that could finally explain why the plane couldn't stop. We're not stopping. Stop. Can you match that? The chiming sound indicates the plane's emergency brake has been switched on. Play it again. We're not stopping. Listen to those tires. First the chime of the emergency brake, then they start skidding. It's a major breakthrough. We got the chime that proved that he has turned on the, uh, the emergency brake. And a short period after that, we could hear the, the, the wheels, uh, the noise from the wheels on the CVR. I think we found our smoking gun. Anti-skid and touchdown protection may not be available. Landing distance will be increased by 60%. Investigators learned that the emergency braking system on the British Aerospace 146 doesn't have anti-skid protection. That was the last piece in the puzzle that told us more about this braking situation. We're stable. We have landing speed. Reducing thrust. Investigators finally understand why Flight 670 ended in tragedy. They touch down here, but the runway is damp, and there's a tailwind giving them a bit of an extra push. And spoilers. The captain activates the spoilers, but they don't deploy. No spoilers. Full brakes. Here, he switches on the emergency brake. We're not stopping. And that's the final straw. Which means basically that the wheels locked as on a car with no anti-skid brakes. The plane's fate is sealed. We're going over!
Investigators now believe that even with the damp runway, no spoilers and a tailwind, the plane would have stopped in time if not for the emergency brake. We're not stopping. But the pilots had no way to predict the outcome. They had never trained for such an unlikely scenario. If you have a failure at a critical time, like just after touchdown in a case like this, and the, the normal systems for deceleration do not work, uh, then you automatically, uh, almost by instinct, go on to the next level. You need to go to the emergency brakes. Hang on! You have to stop the aircraft, and that's what they try to do. In this case, of course, the runway wasn't long enough. In their final report, the AIBN calls for better training to help pilots stop safely in similar situations. They also call for longer safety areas around runways, especially at airports like Stord that are surrounded by steep terrain. 